shoulder that could be the big guy shining down right now couldn't it on this september 17th 2024 the birthday of colon david i Wing colon miller the man who brought and structure communication parse syntax grammar to the public in 1988 he passed on in the summer solstice of 2018. Was that six years ago? I've been doing this for over six years, so. I was blessed to have been in contact with him during the last year of his life. Of course, I'm not inclined or anything like that to call him a friend because he wasn't. I didn't know him that well. I didn't know him really at all. But I did speak with him on the phone and Skype and emails and text messages and so on and so forth. Uh, and I do consider him one of my teachers. Two main teachers. Colin David Iphewin Colin Miller and Colin Raven hyphen Farhad hyphen Tohidi Colin Afarin. David's the guy that brought this stuff to the public. If there was no David, there would be no Colin Jason hyphen Matthew Colin Glass, there would be no colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould, there would be no colon Mark hyphen lowercase K Kishon colon Christopher. There would be no one out there doing this if it weren't. So let's get that straight right now. So what I thought that I'd do today is start off with uh, a piece from his famous nine-hour seminar. Talk about that for a minute. And at any point, if you have a question or something you'd like to say or chime in, feel free to do so in the live chat. Don't be scared, folks. Don't be scared. It's the first two little words over here. It says this note. It doesn't say for this note or by this note or of this note or with this note. It says this. Notice what he just said there. It doesn't say for this note or by this note or of this note or with this note. For, of, with, and by. He doesn't use any other positionals. And I have two other, at least two other videos on my channel of two different occasions where he gives correct sentence structure concatenation for the facts, of the facts, are, with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. For, of, with, and by. For is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. He doesn't use any other positionals when he's teaching that concatenation. Now, if you look at correct sentence structure documents written by Colin Russell, Hyphen J. Colin Gould, you will see other positionals, which nullifies, makes the grammar a fictitious conveyance of grammar because in addition to the four positionals, there are four functions. Again, correct sentence structure, one and one is one. One word, one meaning, one function, one congruency. The function of for is cause. The function of of is concern or consequence. The function of with is possessive. The function of by is authority. So if you're going to use another positional in there like uh, through, what's the function of through? It can't be cause, it can't be concern, it can't be possessive, it can't be authority, because those are already taken. 
So you got to create another function because one and one is one. And if you do that, what do you do? You nullify the mathematical interface of the thing. No. Therefore, we drop the preposition. This becomes an adverb making note of verb. Does this look like a verb to you? Mm, misrepresentation. So now we have a Title 18, Section 1341, mail fraud, carries a $1 million fine and 30 years in prison. Title 18, 1001, fictitious conveyance of grammar. Title 18, Section 13, uh, at rather, Title 15, Section 1692E, false and misleading statements. And we have Title 18, 1621, perjury, because we didn't advertise it. Now we have four criminal acts that take place on the dollar bill. Bill Clinton then says to Congress, you know, in two weeks I've got to address the union and do my union address. I have to tell the world that America's a verb on the money and then articulate the criminal activities that's taking place here and disqualify all U.S. currency to 150 countries worldwide depend on for commerce, food, and energy. Or we can seal a case. All those in favor of sealing the case, raise your hand. 102 <laughs> hands goes up and he walks out and doesn't say a word. Now, who controls money? Universal Postal Union. Universal Postal Union gets the word, and all 250 countries are told to stand down. Bill Clinton's case is sealed, and nobody talks about Bill Clinton's indiscretion. Shortly thereafter, Hillary Clinton runs for president of the United States against Obama. Does anybody talk about the indiscretion of Bill and Hillary? Not a peep, not even North Korea, not even Afghanistan, not even the Middle East countries. All the people that hate the United States are all told by the Universal Postal Union, you will keep your mouth shut and don't talk about anything of Bill Clinton, or he's going to spill the beans on the, on the language. Squeaky wheel gets the oil. You think you got freedom of speech? Yeah. It stops with the money. Who controls the money controls the world. Always follow the gold. So therefore, uh, Hillary doesn't make it. Obama's elected as the 47th consecutive left-handed president. Romney is right-handed, by the way. Can anybody certify that? 47 left-handed presidents? There's never been a right-handed president. What does that tell you? Who's going to win the election? Obama, yes. Or me. I have 5 billion people on my website. I have 58% 50, of the world's population studying parse syntax grammar, I could very easily be as a written-in candidate come November 5th or 6th. Yeah, November 6th, that's right. Well, what do you think of that? 58% of the world's population uh, are his students? Five billion? So if you, if I were to walk out this door, one in, over one in every two people that I meet would know who that man is right there, right? Am I right? Anybody out there have any argument with that? Right, Tuesday. Uh, just like uh, Lewinska did in Poland, stood up, people found him to be an honest person, and he got 92% of the write-in vote, became the best president Poland ever had for 10 years until he took a bribe and got thrown in jail. That's another thing I wanted to bring up here, is that he tells the story about Bill Clinton, and he does claim to be some sort of advisor or legal advisor for Bill Clinton. I don't uh, begrudge a man for making a buck, right? What do we know about Bill and Hillary Clinton? They're politicians. Politicians at the highest level. And folks, I don't care whether you're left or right or the middle or whatever you are. You cannot get to the position of an Obama, a Clinton, a Bush, a Harris, a Biden, or a Trump 
without being involved in these elite games somehow. There's no way. Some could say that I might be um, engaging in a logical fallacy called personal incredulity, meaning I'm saying something's not true because I personally don't think that it is. But if you go by the circumstantial evidence of the people who've held that office in the past, they're all members of the brotherhood, aren't they? They're all members of that society, some form or another of Freemasonry. The man on your screen is no exception. His parents were no exception. So, I mean, and also most, at least uh, that I can think of in uh, present times, there are members of the bar as well or former members of the bar. So you don't get to that place without playing games like that. He's claiming that the Hawaiian language used positional lodial phrases in front of their uh, facts and none of their facts had a vowel in front of two consonants. And so therefore 38,000 Hawaiians were beheaded because of it. I just got a comment on TikTok from, from someone who was saying it's very hard to, you know, believe, to use a fiction term, believe in quantum grammar when you hear David Wim Miller saying things like this, like he, in, in listening to this video, which is what, nine and a half hours long, he just, I never, I forgot like how many claims he makes that just can't possibly be certified. There are dozens, if not hundreds of these things. And it's, they're great stories. I mean, I, I got, I'm not saying anything, uh, anything bad about the guy. It's just that there's so many things that he says that cannot possibly be proven. So what are you left with? Your own discernment. They cut off their heads. And finally, after doing enough of them, they, people got the got the message that if we don't follow this new adverb verb program and that we're going to be dead. So that's how they captured Hawaii. So this, this brainwashing of the adverb verb scenario became relevant. And so Stalin was able to get financing and captured Russia. 19, in 1934, Mao Zedong nationalized China, which had 1,200 dialects. Now they only have four. So we need usually three. I just came back from 23 days in China. Uh, that was quite an eye opener going to China. Everything you hear about China? Total nonsense. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. It's total brainwashing. Those people are, if I dropped you, if I blindfolded you and dropped you off in China right now in the countryside, you think you're in Indiana. All right. What he's saying about China is not wrong. It's not wrong, folks. Uh, from 2009 until 2015, I worked in Arizona as a manager on a massive golf community of um, seven 18-hole golf courses, a horse ranch, walking trails, a health community, a spa, all kinds of stuff. Uh, point being, each golf course uh, where I worked, you know, I was on the maintenance crew, a manager, uh, superintendent on the maintenance crew, assistant superintendent. Um, we had like 25 to 30 employees. And every year we would get interns from China. Each golf course would get two interns on an internship program. And speaking with them, they they opened my eyes to what it's like in China. It's nothing like we're told. 
Now, racism might even be more prevalent in China than it is here because money and status is based upon how light your skin is in China. That's the one thing. But everything else is, like everything you're told about it is this total nonsense. It's flat, all farms, people working, growing corn, wheat, barley, everything. Bamboo. Just they don't have any equipment. They're all out there working by hand. And they're, they're, they're pu pushing carts. They don't have tractors pulling things. Some of the, some of the bigger farms have a, will use a tractor. And these tractors are pretty old. They're like 30, 40 years old. I didn't see any, any modern equipment anywhere, but I saw a lot of labor. And they got 1.4 million people, a billion people. So they got plenty of people. But most of the country is either mountainous or desert, so there's very few, very small farm areas. I drove uh, probably 600 miles totally around China's countryside. Uh, when I got off the plane in China, I was met by a, a translator. As I have held an ambassadorship with China since 2002, as a result of with the United Nations and my plenipotentiary judgeship. So when I showed up in China, they, they met me as a returning ambassador to China, and I was put in the presidential suite at the Bird's Nest, which is the Olympic Village in Beijing for 10 days with a chauffeur limousine at the state's expense. But then what they wanted me to do was syntax, their electronics program. So I took an 1,800-word uh, uh, patent on a new electronics cell phone. The new cell phone is transparent aluminum, 3 by 5 inch screen, 3D holographic. It has a 200 loom video projector. And then when you set it down, it has pop-up air touch keyboard, just like Minority Report. What? Really state-of-the-art stuff. And it's not a four gigabyte, it's one terabyte. We're, we're talking 128. Out of all the stories he's telling, I'd have to say this is the most believable one. How about it, folks? Gigs on a 20 nano chip to a, to a terabyte for efficiency, memory. Uh, the 200 loom is in high resolution Blu-ray. Uh, and it puts out a four foot screen. Damn, Verizon, where do I get next to your computer, talks to your computer, transfers all the information from your computer into the Come cell phone now. and puts it up on a four-foot screen. Just for, oh, it also has a two-inch by two-inch transducer. Sub, it's called a subspace transducer. It's a microphone. It's a speaker. And it's also an antenna. It has a 38-mile range, can operate 100 feet underground, <laughs> underwater, can read minerals up to 100 feet underground because it works in subspace. Now think of the hydrogen atom. You have an electron and you have a proton. This goes in the space between the electron and the proton. As you know, all objects that we touch are held together by atoms. Atoms run on electromagnetics. But this operates in the space between the atoms and the electrons in subspace. Therefore, it can transmit 38 miles between uh, towers and also operates underground. So this is the next stealth technology. That doesn't exist anymore with this new technology. The military's had this for 12 years and has been de declassified because everybody, all the other militaries in the world have it, so they're gonna make it available to the public. So this is gonna be the when? new cell phones coming out. Even though your Galaxy 3 might be pretty special at the the cell phone store, this, this next generation cell phone is going to be something else. It's going to be Star Trek material. And, well, you've got a really good patent here, right? Written in adverb, verb. And I was at this meeting with five electronics firms that the uh, Chinese government invited me to be there. We had a, the guy that developed the subspace uh, technology back in uh, 2000. Uh, Michael and Joseph was a Nikola Tesla electronics genius. He built four of these uh, Nikola Tesla coils. So bring these two guys together, and they got these this great electronics. 
Okay, I'm going to pause that for a minute, folks, and address what quadruple A here says. Isn't that a psychological trick to keep the attention going, making these unprovable claims in between the bits he talks about quantum grammar? Imagine nine hours of straight gr quantum grammar content. Imagine a thousand video. Okay, not a thousand videos, because not all of my videos are straight quantum grammar content. But if you go into the Parse playlist, the Syntax playlist, and the Correct Sentence Structure playlist, there's well over nine hours of Correct Sentence Structure material. And you can watch that straight if you want to. But to say, isn't that a psychological trick? Well, it could be. It could be. But that's that would be, to me, my own perception, that would be an assumption. I can't, I mean, I can speculate as to why he would do that, say those things, but also I'm a very logical individual. Okay, I'd like to think I'm a logical individual. I try to cultivate logic. And I put myself back into 2012 when he's giving this seminar. Think of it, folks. If I'm sitting in that in that room listening to these claims. And I'm sure there was some sort of meet and greet afterwards where you can actually speak with the man and actually probably a Q&A. He's there to be able to certify these claims if you want him to. That's how these things work. So if there was a now space juncture in which to ask questions of this man, it would have been then. Now, it's just, to my mind, it's futile to even think about it because they're just non-certifiable. Um, Wayne Caltan says, yes, be careful of mainstream media's agenda. Is uh, Wayne Caltan claiming that David Wynn Miller is mainstream media? I'm well aware of it, and it's very sophisticated. I feel for folk who blindly believe. Discernment is a necessary skill. Logic and critical thinking. Discernment is no contract. Believe is no contract. Logic and critical hyphen cogitation is the way I would phrase it. I mean, nonstop nine hours fired straight at you and keep your attention going and remember all that. Well... When you're going to see David Wynn Miller, it's kind of like going to see your favorite rock band, right? Not every song is going to be a hit, is it? There's some filler in there. Actually, I tried to fact check many of his claims in real time when I was watching his video nine hours long the first time. Most of it checked out accurately. accurately. JRM SS 2024. If you don't mind... You just made a claim there. You said most of it checked out accurately. So out of the dozens and dozens of claims he made in nine hours or nine and a half hours, most of it checked out accurately. If you don't mind, if you want to take the now space to do it, write me an email at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and send me a list of those things with your sources so that I can check them out myself. Because in six plus years, most of what he says not having to do with the grammar I've not been able to prove or certify. So maybe your search methods are more intense and more uh, detail-oriented than mine. So I'd very much appreciate if you would share your closures with me. Because I'm all for supporting what this man says as something that is true. Because as a... How can you say? As someone who has affection for David Wynn Miller. I want to think that he's not lying. That's bottom line, really. I want to think that. I find you logical and I have great discernment. You see, again, like I said in the in the comments field and in the comments video, that's where you and I differ. If I say something like, I have great discernment, I'll correct myself and say, well, I try to cultivate great discernment. Because to say you have great discernment is, to me, arrogant. That's, I'm just being straightforward with you. 
If someone says, I'm humble, that's that's pretty arrogant. Like, usually people who say stuff like that and don't correct themselves or don't qualify it are the direct opposite of what they're saying. Because you don't know what you don't know, and I don't know what I don't know. So for me to say that I have great discernment, I may think that, but I also may be fooling myself. I don't know for sure. I can only do the best I can, and so therefore I'm not going to talk myself up to other people. I'm just not going to do it because that is one great red flag for an ego. I tried to look up the Chile earthquake details. They checked out accurately and also checked Kamala Harris. 26 billion episode. It checked it too. Hey, didn't didn't David Wynn Miller say that uh, Kamala, he taught Kamala Harris correct sentence structure? Did, didn't he say that? That she was one of his students? Bro. When I listen to Kamala Harris speak, I don't I don't like to speak, you know, ill of anyone, really, um, or or to denigrate anyone. But listening to, to the way she words things and the way she articulates what she's told to say, I can't fathom that she possesses the neurological pathways to learn this grammar. I just don't see it. I could be wrong. Just for my own closure, do you have an active claim of life? And do you keep up with Russell J. Gould? Seed of the Diamond Sun. I have had a live life claim since 2017 under my own authority. I have nothing to do with Russell J. Gould. Uh, Russell J. Gould does not use correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Uh, Based upon my auditing of his public documents, which you can find on this YouTube channel, you can find where I point out all the mistakes on his documents, but I also point out how to fix them. You must be new here. So no, I don't have anything to do with the man or anything he does. He holds no position in my life, other than he was the student and underling of David Wynn Miller. David Wynn Miller was the master. Russell was the student. That's about all. Um, but we, we're not going to go into that here. Because, again, he has nothing to do with what I do. I've been a successful grammar tutor for six plus years. I've used the grammar successfully on my own with autonomy for six plus years. I don't need a chief. I don't need anyone's authority to do anything other than my own authority, which is the same for you if you would choose that path. I teach autonomy. I teach folks to use correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, so that they may be the master of their own biosphere and their own vessel, and they don't need anyone's permission to communicate however they choose. No nanny states here, folks. I went after the facts, so I think he doesn't make absurd claims, but some of the things about moon landing could entirely, definitely fall under the borderline conjecturing. I asked my good friend, Katharina, David Wayne Cowtan. Who the hell's David Wayne Cowtan? What's going on here? He speaks on how much of a liar manipulator David Wynn Miller was outside the correct sentence structure he brought to the world. Um, yeah. I mean, someone who just makes it a point to slander someone else in public or in private like that, um, that's a red flag to me right off the bat. Why would you do that? Why would you do that to someone who took you in when you were a young man taught you so much, gave you so much, let you live with them. And then when he passes away, all of a sudden, you badmouth him. That's a big face palm, folks. That's a big face palm. Uh, 
I'll definitely send you an email if there need be, but David Miller was hardly anything other than being truthful. All right, JRM, prove your claims. Send the email. I'll look forward to it. By the way, do you mind share? Well, okay, you don't have to share your correct name here. I'm not going to ask you to break anonymity. I know folks like to use nom de guerres on the internet. I know folks don't like to come into the light and show who they really are. But when you send me the email, please include your YouTube username as well as your correct name so that I know who you are and I can associate you with uh, your personality on YouTube because I get a lot of emails, bro, or sister. I don't I don't know your gender. Um, I get a lot of emails, and so and I'm getting old. So I need a little help in the in uh, drawing connections between YouTube handles and, and correct names. So thank you. No, he said he helped California State fight and win a mortgage connected to fraud charge for which California State got back. Okay. California State? Who's that? Is that a person? How can a state get money? State of what? California? State of happiness? State of depression? What are we talking about here? Thanks for the response. You're welcome. Thanks for the comment. Dharma Science Radio says, oh, yeah. Oh, they're speaking to someone else. Sorry. Uh, happy birthday to David Miller. Yes, happy birthday. Happy birthday. I will try to be more careful in presentation when making claims of. I'm definitely trying to learn correct sentence. Well, hey, uh, Wayne Caltan. All we can do is try and do the best we can, man. The best we can do at any point in the now space. That's why I unbanned you, because my banning of you may have been a knee-jerk reaction on my part uh, at a time during the day when my patience was at a very thin level. Uh, so that's why I reinstated you. Because I don't think you're a malicious person at all. I don't. I just think you have very strong convictions about yourself, which I do as well. I'd suggest we should just try and be with David Wynn Miller today and celebrate his 17th birthday with good memories and leave the rest out. Ah, someone telling us what we should or shouldn't do. My favorite type of individual. Well, JRM. I do appreciate you with having the volition of sending me an email with your proofs of your claims. However, if you want to do what you're talking about and just try and be with David Miller today and celebrate his birthday with good memories, you can do your own live stream and uh, maybe some folks will join you over there. But here, we're not going to sugarcoat anything. I, I can speak. I feel with my perception, my sensation that I can speak about this man because number one, I've actually spoken to him personally. I got to know him over the last year of his life. Never met him in person, but through phone calls, Skype, video calls, text messages, emails, so on and so forth. I did get to know him a little bit. I can speak about him without slandering him, without marring his memory. So if that does make you uncomfortable, I mean, no one's twisting your arm to be here. And I don't mean that in a harsh way. I mean, really, no one is forcing anyone to be on YouTube. <laughs> AG of CA was Kamala Harris at the time. I guess they must mean Attorney General. I believe Kamala was state representative in that mortgage case, the case in California. No, I'm not telling you in particular. I'm talking about others who try to malign his name, particularly when David was not here to defend himself. Well. I mean, to me, that's just your own personal bias there. I mean, if that, if you let, see, look, Marcus Aurelius, anybody know who Marcus Aurelius is? I highly recommend reading his meditations. Uh, nothing can affect you unless you let it. If it bothers you that people are slandering and insulting David Wynn Miller, which by the way, no one has done in this chat. No one I've seen has slandered or maligned him in this chat. They said Russell J. Gould talked bad about him, but no one personally in this chat that I've seen has ins insulted David Wynn Miller, by the way. 
But anyways, if that if you let that bother you, then that says something about you. Marcus Aurelius, Marcus Aurelius tells us that inside we can cultivate peace and nothing can bother us unless we let it. David Miller was a violent greatness, mercy. De nada. David Miller was a violinist, pianist too. Did anyone here know that before? Yes, yes. I knew he was a. I knew he had several instruments in his tiny house. Um, he was also a 92nd degree Mason by his own claim. Did you know that? Harris versus big banks and mortgage meltdown. Harris entry into national spotlight came at the tail end of the Great Recession, when as California's Attorney General, wasn't she also? The what you could say, uh, what what is the word I want to use here? The gumar of a married man. That's a quote from a quick Google search. No one has done it here, Jason. Yes, exactly. So why bring it up? That was in response to that California case. Oh, okay. Okay, don't know. I heard him say he was a 92nd degree, 93 degree. 93? I have never. In six plus years of watching hundreds of hours of David Wynn Miller videos, I've never heard him claim to be a 93rd degree Mason. Never, not once. Maybe you have more watch time than me. Maybe you have more experience than me. Maybe you've seen a video I haven't seen. If so, please that inclu include that in your email so that I can see him say he's a 90 third degree mason because i've only ever heard him say he's a 92nd degree mason so let's go back to the video here it's patent but what's a what's a the an object just like this pen what's an object worth if you don't have a patent for it that's written in quantum language they can be protected worldwide so they brought me in because i'm the only guy on the planet that writes quantum so i went ahead and i we showed it we brought in two university professors this was 2012 he just said he's the only guy in the world that writes in quantum. Russell J. Gould was his student at the time. Was his underling, his apprentice? Keep that in mind. Professors from Beijing and one from Hong Kong on, on grammar. And they looked at it and said the patents couldn't be rewritten in less than four months. I, uh, I says, well, give me your patents and I'll bring it back tomorrow morning and we'll all get together. So I rewrote it overnight. It took me eight hours, to write 1,860 words in quantum and restructure it. So every sentence was certified mathematically frontwards and backwards. So when they, we went ahead and we... He probably had a Freudian slip. How, how does that apply to saying he's a 93rd degree Mason rather than a 92nd? How is that a Freudian slip? Do you know what a Freudian slip actually is? Because that, to me, that doesn't fall into that category. That's not a Freudian slip. A Freudian slip would be something like, um, okay, you see here I'm drinking coffee, right? I'm drinking coffee, and then I have a cell phone. And I'm talking on the phone, and I say, yeah, I'm going to go over to coffee tonight and do this. Instead of saying, I'm going to go over to my brother's house tonight and do this, I say, I'm going over to coffee's house tonight and do this. That's a Freudian slip because I'm thinking coffee because I'm drinking coffee, but I'm also trying to articulate that I'm going to my brother's house. That's a Freudian slip. I don't know how a 93rd degree would be a Freudian slip for a 92nd degree. And also, if he would say something like, I'm a 97th degree Mason, that would make more sense that that's a slip, that that's a, a, a sleight of tongue rather than 92nd. But 93rd is like a completely different enunciation. So I don't see how that would be a mistake. So that's why I want to see the video. That's why I want to see the video.
Well, all right. Does anyone here know why David Wynn Miller claimed to be a 92nd degree Mason by his own words that he actually gave closure, non-certifiable closure, but closure based upon his word of why he was a 92nd degree Mason? Does anyone here know why? Since we do have some folks in the chat that are claiming to be knowledgeable about his claims, elucidate the chat and myself as to why he claimed to be a 92nd degree Mason. I was thinking they had complementary skills, win with the grammar, gold with the post office and shipping skills, not sure though. Uh, from my study and my knowledge of the history and speaking with David and also speaking with Russell via emails when during the time when we were friendly, um, I would say you're not entirely wrong, Wayne, but I will say that David Miller, okay, this is the way my comprehension of it is. David Miller came up with the positional lodial phrase and the verb concepts. Russell came in with the now space. He said, why don't we put this in the now space? And so he brought that to it. David already had knowledge of foreign vessel and dry dock, i.e. court mechanics, judge mechanics, uh, shipping mechanics, because he's the one that shipped Russell. It was his idea to ship Russell around the world without a passport using postage, which I know some people dispute that. But that's totally possible to me, that Russell would be able to travel the world at that time, wet back then, by using postage. Do you f people realize that children were shipped across the United States using the Postal Service with stamps in the early 1900s and late 1800s? Are you aware of that? It, it, you can do that. I'm sure after Russell did it, I'm sure that was the last time it happened and they stopped it, okay? But it is entirely plausible that that would happen. Um, and yes, you, I do think that uh, Russell went deeper into the shipping and banking because they, after perhaps, this is my speculation, David caught Russell up on the grammar, then they both sort of zoomed in on what each of them would concentrate on. And Russell concentrated on the banking and the shipping. And, and David was more into the grammar and the court and making contracts with who knows who. Um, little known, uh, if you watch some of my story, uh, uh, my story video I published a while back, there was a third person involved. And his name was not Gordon Gaunch. Allegedly, there was a third person involved, which I'm not going to name. And that individual did most of the Parse study. From personal accounts of people that were there and knew them back then, that's what I was told. Anyways. But we're getting into speculation here. Let, let's, let's get out of that and get back to this. Uh, Vatican Key Holder. Uh, to me, again, that, that claim is entirely plausible because of what I know and what I know about the Vatican and what I've learned. That's entirely possible. Vatican City key holder, all right? Now, to say you're a key master, I, I could actually make the claim of being a key master if I wanted to because of my knowledge of the tarot. Because tarot... I don't, know, I don't know, this is a big reveal for you folks, but the tarot deck are the keys. When David Miller talks about being a key master, key holder, whatever he claims, he's talking about the tarot deck. He himself has said that. The tarot deck are the, what is it, 78 keys, half negative, half positive. Those are keys. And if you have knowledge of those symbols and those keys and you have mastered them and you know about them and how to use them, then you're a key master. And I've been studying tarot for eight, ten years, so I could consider myself that, although I would don't publicly claim it. 
That's what it means to be key master. Not 78 keys, not 64. You ever hear David say that um, 64 keys, gene keys? No, tarot keys. It's the tarot. Well, okay. I, I don't know if it um, connects into human design, i.e. human no sign. Uh, I don't know that if, that it uh, connects into that. I have no idea because I don't know anything about human design really too much. Jason, even the Eastern Theosophy teaches through the Tantric traditions. Sanskrit gave Shiva 64 Tantras. That may be so, but that doesn't mean anything to me historically. Because history is a story. And unless you were there, you can't possibly certify it. So I use 78 keys. You may want to limit yourself to 64 keys or the people that came before you or your ancestors or whatever, but I don't want to limit myself. I'll use 78 or 79 or 80 or however many there are. I will use them. Everything that's available, I will use if it's useful to me. Um, oh, no one has answered my question. No one has answered my question as to why he claimed to be a 92nd degree Mason. Like, what was the reason he claimed that? Like, what was his proof? What qualified him to be a 92nd degree Mason? All you David Wim Miller knowledgeable folks out there sharing your knowledge about the man, share that knowledge. Do you know why? Do you even question why he was a 92nd degree Mason or how that could possibly be? Because he could what? That could be. Well, I have no idea. I'm not a Freemason. I would never presume or assume how many degrees there are in masonry. Logically thinking, there are 360 degrees in a circle. So for myself, with my knowledge of what I know, I could conceivably claim to be a 360 degree, whatever. But I wouldn't claim that. I would never claim that because I have nothing to do with Freemasonry. Not to say I haven't been asked or approached. See, my issue, folks, I don't think of Freemasonry as good or bad. It's just, it just is. It's a brotherhood. It's a private club, okay, to me. And there's nothing wrong with that. What I can't get past is I'm my own authority. I hate bullying. I hate authoritarianism. All right, hate is a strong word. I don't care for it, okay? I don't care for it. So with Freemasonry, my cognition of the way that structure works is, first of all, the most important thing is you have to participate in the belief of a higher power, whatever that is. You have to believe in a God, whatever that is, whether your God is Allah, Yahweh, Shiva, Satan, raw, whatever it is, you have to believe in a higher power. Kind of like Alcoholics Anonymous, right? So, and then you have to put the brotherhood first. Above all, above yourself, above your family, above everything. Your duty is to the craft. I can't, I won't do that. I won't do that. I will not do that. I will not allow myself to be under someone's thumb. And that's, again, one of the biggest problems I have with Russell J. Gould is that the way he presents himself and the way folks bow down to him, it just, it's very distasteful to me. That, that's total fiction thinking in my mind. The whole religious thing is like, a huge mind control psyop. Get people to believe in something they can't prove, and you can get them to do all kinds of shit. All right, let me catch up with these comments real quick here. Dharma, the human genome, actually has 8,000 such keys. The human genome, how are you going to prove that? <laughs> Why? Because science says so. Trust the science, bruh. No, Jason, 128. Are you a Freemason? 
Can you certify that? My daughter does some tarot card pulling. I don't know much about it. Well, Wayne, I can tell you this. One way to look at the tarot is, um, all right. If I look outside here, I can see the corner of my house. I cannot see around that corner. Are you with me? I'm looking outside my window right now. I can see the corner of my house, but I cannot see what's on the other side of that corner because the house is blocking it. The tarot can sort of act as a mirror, like a rear view mirror in your car. When you look in the rear view mirror, you can't look behind you unless you look behind you, but you can look in the mirror and see. That's kind of like what the tarot can do if you know how to do it. It can show you the possibilities of what's coming around the bend. And with my own, and this is my own personal testimony about the tarot, that it has never been wrong for me in the things that I've used it for in eight to 10 years of using it. So it's a very interesting phenomenon. Very interesting phenomenon. And I don't, and, and to put it another way, I don't think it has anything to do with the tarot itself, but it has to do with what's here. Because he claimed he knew the mathematical interface in all 5,000 languages in planet Earth. Uh, that's part of it, quadruple A, but, but not specifically. He actually gave a specific reason as to why he was a 92nd degree Mason. Hmm, I remember David saying he was the highest ranking Freemason of all time because he syntax their documents to prove all the works in correct miss and correct grammar. I don't know if that's true or not, Dharma, but that's not the reason why he said he was a 92nd degree Mason. Um, and I don't remember ever hearing him say he was the highest ranking Freemason. If you could please share with me a link to where David Wynn Miller says that he's the highest ranking Freemason, I'd appreciate that. I'd appreciate some certification of that claim. Some people are unfree masons. <laughs> if you had the access to the theosophical knowledge from the Eastern world, the variety of masonry is far more complex than ever. I have had access to theosophy. I have uh, studied that. Uh, Rudolf Schenker, Madame Blavatsky. All that stuff. I, I man, I've I've been through. I've been on this planet for fifty-two years, and the majority of that has been spent studying metaphysics, religions, philosophy, theosophy, everything you can probably think of. Uh, Wayne Caltan, that would be from the record company called His Master's Voice. What? Um. So you don't believe that Russ and David captured the flag at the end of the last bankruptcy? Why do people start sentences like that? So you don't believe? Blah, 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 blah. Actually, I don't really give two shits about that, whether they did that or not, because capture is an act of war. and War negates contract. That is why there is no correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, copyright, copy, claim on the flag. If there is, show it to me. You can go into my YouTube channel there. Uh, what's your name? Seed of the Diamond Sun. You can go into my YouTube channel and see proof that there is no correct sentence structure claim on any flag because the grammar is incorrect. There's incorrect positional sequencing. There's particles of negation in the facts. The whole works. Excessive spacing. Incorrect use of quotations, italics, so on and so forth. It's a mess. And also, most of Russell J. Gould's documents that I've seen in the last few years have a spire on top of the flag, which negates the constitution of the flag. So, so many things I could go into, but this is getting off track here. The important thing to know is that, for me anyway, speaking personally, I have used the 1 by 1.9 title flag successfully to stop trespass for six plus years, never failed. And I never had to ask anybody to use it. Because guess what? If you have closure on the grammar, if you know what the hell you're talking about, and you know how to convey the mathematical interface on the spot, 
under duress in person in a live situation, then you have authority to use that flag. At least I do. I've proven it to myself over and over again. So I guess all I can say is learn the grammar for yourself because I'm pretty sure you don't know the grammar. Learn the grammar for yourself and you'll find out. Or as the kids say, F around and find out. <laughs> um, that's where I think Russ would get his power from because it, there is no power. Show me the power that Russell J. Gould has. Show me. Pro demonstrate what power he has. The only power that I see he has is over his followers, the people that believe him, that believe his BS. Those are the old, that's the only power that I see that he has. I meant to say 128 kind of tantras are using keys to entire cosmic energy. I have no idea what that means. Uh, Jason, someone said the Bible is the greatest story ever told. What's your take on that? The Bible is adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, psychological control mechanism, the greatest psychological control mechanism ever perpetrated on mankind. Get people to believe in something they cannot prove, and you'll get them to do whatever you want. If he did capture the flag from the fiction, then he would be responsible for moving the people from the world of fiction to the world of fact. That is not correct. Why do people want to put responsibility on one person? See, the way I teach it is that you become responsible for you. You don't have to rely on somebody else. The knowledge is there. A thousand videos on this channel right here. You can learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar for yourself. You can. I put all my knowledge out here for free. You can learn how to use the grammar and be autonomous. Why do you want to put that responsibility on someone else? See, that's the thing I've gotten away from. And that's the thing that religion will also do is, is it's a, what I call an authoritarian construct where you put the authority on someone else. No, 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 no. The, the mechanic is to be your own authority and don't rely on anyone else. I mean, of course, friends and equals, you can help each other. But to have someone in charge, just, just be your own authority. I know some folks find that disturbing and, and so foreign and alien to them because people are used to passing the buck. Well, why didn't he do that? It's his fault that, that the world is in this, the condition it's in. I'll share the video and I see it again. Dave mentions being the highest ranking Freemason. Maybe I misremember. Uh, 100, 100, 100. Great response. Does anyone have the... Thank you. Does anyone have the information about David Rue's demise? I know it's not important to speak about it today, but his birthday, keep track of the activity. That's amazing. You know all this stuff about David, but you don't know how he passed away. It's a, a interesting story about that. When he passed away in the summer solstice of 2018, for one year and one day after his passing, I could not find, nor my tutor Raven, nor anyone else in our little circle, we could find no obituary for David Wynn Miller. Not in Milwaukee, not in Hawaii, not in anywhere. No local obituary. No news of his death on Wikipedia or anywhere else. He had a Wikipedia page in 2018. It said he was a welder. And it didn't say anything about his death until after a year and about a day. And then after that, Boom, all of a sudden, his death was put up on Wikipedia. And then you started seeing things about it. Pretty interesting. Also, before David's passing, I could find no fiction certification that David or Russell had ever been in a foreign vessel in dry dock. I found no court records in any state in the United States, past tense United States, of them being in court. And then after David passed, a year after he passed, all of a sudden, all these court records were readily available. In Michigan, in California, in Wyoming, I think, a, a lot of different states. Like David and Russell were in and out of court 
dozens and dozens of times from like 2010 to 2012 ish is when I looked. So it was a very interesting phenomenon there. I mean, as far as I know, uh, he passed away from heart failure. And he was also very sick. I can say that. Uh, I, I can I can say that with confidence. He was very sick and unhealthy during the last year of his life because he pretty much let himself go. I mean, you'd be talking to him and he'd talk about eating McDonald's and eating corn dogs with his grandkids. He was enjoying life. I mean, I'm not going to hold that against anybody. Maybe he was done. Maybe he had, he was like, man, F this. I'm just going to enjoy myself. I'm going to, I'm not going to try and, you know, be this guy anymore. I'm just going to enjoy life, enjoy my grandkids, enjoy what food tastes good to me, no matter how bad it is for me. And that's it. Who can fault him for that? Bro put his time in, man. Bro put his time in. That's the type of closure I'm seeking. Well, you can get it here. I can guarantee you that because I've done it for other folks who are serious about it. In six plus years, I've taught hundreds of folks. Out of those hundreds of folks, I have about a dozen or more students who are so proficient in correct sentence structure that they can teach another person under duress. They can teach a total stranger about correct sentence structure. That's how good you have to be. So if you're serious, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and start your workshops. It's that easy. Uh, well, I mean, it's not easy, but it's a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, most folks, most folks don't have the constitution or the endurance or the willpower to do that. Because learning the grammar is the first part. That's establishing the foundation. Once you get the grammar and you can use it and know it well enough to teach other people, now you build on that. Now you have to learn how to convey and articulate that knowledge. In addition to that, you have to learn postal mechanics, banking mechanics, flag mechanics. But the grammar comes first. Today we may call him now. Kidding. Ha, ha, ha. I'm Canadian. I have that quantum grammar Canadian constitution. That's why the American flag, they said it could be, I could use a Canadian flag. Doesn't matter. I'm interested in this part. Who's they, Wayne? What Canadian constitution are you talking about? What are you? I'm not sure what you're talking about there. I don't understand it either because I don't understand what you're saying. Please be a little bit more uh, specific. No sound. Really? Happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday, David Miller. David Miller passed away of what? Jason, did you see David tells about the amino acid for the brain for and dose for a pick up the cube? Yes, I did see that quadruple A, but I've never bothered to certify it. There's no coincidence in life, just like there's no straight lines in nature. While that is a perception, I'm in congruence with that perception. The blue thumb group. What about the blue thumb group? I'll get their names here. Muriel Biggs. Okay, so you're talking about what used to be called the Red Thumb Club, then became the community, then became the Syntax Learning Center. Um, Wayne, perhaps um, you don't have closure. Perhaps you don't have closure on flag mechanics. If you were to write a constitution, a correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, constitution for a country, the first flag at the top port side of that document would have to be the one by 1.9 title four grammar flag. You would have to put that flag up there, not the American flag, the grammar flag. 
the stars and stripes, one by 1.9 great ratio is very important. Then, if you want to use a flag for whatever country you're writing the Constitution for, you would put that flag after and under the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar flag. But if you just use the Canadian flag on that document, then that's not a correct sentence structure document. And by the way, need I say, if it was written by Muriel Meta Biggs in that bunch, it's not correct sentence structure. It's quantum gobbledygook. You can show it to me and I'll show you all the mistakes on it, which I think I've already done a video on that anyways. Um, is there a direct or indirect connection between David Miller and Steve Wynn, the casino mogul? I have no idea. No idea. The only folks that I'm familiar with from that bunch, Wayne, are Muriel Meta Biggs, Gordon Michael Schiller, Mari Shopka, Joseph Sloan, Joey John Lester. I think that's it. I think those are the main people. Gordon Schiller. Isn't that an interesting last name? He's a Schiller. I'm not lying. He's a Schiller. Gordon, Gordon Michael Schiller. Yeah. I went with advice from a friend who knew their syntax technique. He's really good friends with Gould now. I asked him about it. He would get very upset. That's about you. Well, I imagine, I mean, I can imagine why they would get upset. Because I'm using correct grammar. I can prove and certify all of my claims about correct grammar. And I do in a thousand videos. They don't even have that type of library. Hell, David Wynn Miller doesn't even have that type of library that I have of video knowledge available free to the public. So I can see why they might be upset about it. And they'll never say why I'm a fraud. The only things that they'll usually say is that I'm a liar and that I badmouth the chief. And then I ask them, well, what am I lying about? And then they can never tell me. And then I say, well, I'm badmouthing the chief. I don't think I've said anything as a personal slander against Russell J. Gould. I've only pointed out that he doesn't use correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. That's all. I've pointed out the mistakes in his grammar, and I've also pointed out how to fix them. It's up to him whether he pays attention or not. Uh, you're welcome. I must learn. You're doing great service. I'm a Y person. Let's do anything for any reason. Wayne, I'm also a Y person, and that's why I started making videos. Because in every, in the hundreds of hours of David Wynn Miller videos that I've watched, he never says why about the grammar. He never gives reasons why. He just gives the how and, and the when and all that stuff, but he never says why. So I had to find that out myself. And I find that I found that out through my tutor, Raven. And I parlayed that into a YouTube channel and put it into a thousand or so videos. Okay, folks, I'm going to give you the reason why David Miller claimed to be a 92nd degree Mason. Are you ready? Here we go. David Wynn Miller claimed to be a 92nd degree Mason specifically because he took the book Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall, syntaxed it, and rewrote it, inserting two-thirds of the missing words. In other words, to put it another way, he allegedly rewrote that entire book using quantum grammar. That's why he's a 92nd degree Mason. That is the reason he gave. Now, when he says he put in two thirds of the missing words, what does that mean? It basically means he put in all the for those, of those, with those, and by those to position the facts. 
He put in all the for those, of those, with those, and by those to position the facts. He put in all the for those, of those, with those, and by those to position the facts. That's what he means by inserting two-thirds of the missing words. And so he rewrote the book, and that is why he claims 92nd degree Mason by condition of knowledge. His knowledge level elevated him to 92nd degree by his own words. I'm sharing with you, paraphrasing David Wynn Miller, what he said. I don't know, JRM. I've never seen his translation of secret teachings of all ages. Supposedly, it stands like this high off the ground. Who has that book? I have no idea. So again, I didn't know David Wynn Miller personally. I don't have access to his personal library or any of his personal effects. The only thing I have of David Wynn Miller's that he sent me was his book, which I paid 200 bucks for, and he paid the postage and all that. Um, and autographed the book. But other than that, I don't have anything that belongs to David Wynn Miller. Be careful what kind of jokes you want to play when you're in the presence of law enforcement and what your attitude is. If the government wants your farm, they can charge you with carrying a concealed weapon and throw you into a quandrum of illusion, get you to sign off and turn over your farm to the government, which is a foreign vessel in dry dock. And all of a sudden, if you're sitting on the street going, what happened to me? I was writing a check for one minute. Next thing, I'm guilty of an assault, assault with a deadly weapon in the bank with a ballpoint pen. What kind of nonsense is this? It is about volition. And that's why I have a fate writ volition claim. So no one can question my volition. If someone asks me, Jason, what is your volition? I can show them my fate writ volition claim, written in correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Do you have a fate writ volition claim? Because if you don't, now your volition can be questioned. And one other thing I want to um, talk about is. You have to know what you're doing. If you're going to use this stuff, you have to know what you're doing, especially if you go into a foreign vessel and dry dock. Because if you don't know, think about this. Think about if you don't know anything about correct sentence structure, but you're so psyched about it. You're pumped that you discovered it and you want to shit. You would just want to tell everybody. I mean, I know this. I was a beginner once myself. I was so excited about it. I wanted to tell everybody about it. The problem was every time I tried to explain it to somebody, they didn't know what the hell I was talking about. And they looked at me like I was nuts. So if you take that and you don't know what you're talking about and you try to use it in court using a, a document you copy and pasted from David Wynn Miller's book or whatever, or something that someone sent you or you paid for, and you don't know the grammar and you go in and try and use it in a court, one possible outcome is they're going to look at you like you're nuts. And then they're going to say you're a danger to yourself and others, and they're going to throw you in the nut house or prison because you, you're acting crazy. But if you do know what you're talking about, and you can teach that and articulate that in a calm and peaceful fashion, being a steward of the cadence of your breath and your conveyance, now they look at you different. Now they're looking at you like, wow. I don't know what he's talking about, but I know he knows what he's talking about. And I don't want nothing to do with it. And then they just get you out of there. They want you out as fast as they can get you out. And then they leave you alone. Or they try to come at you a different way. But that's how it works. You got to know what you're talking about, folks. Or they're going to put you in a nut house or prison. Or they'll find some other way to do it. Just like David said, you know, using a pen as a weapon. Whatever. Even even papers as a weapon, folks that don't know what they're talking about, don't have closure on the grammar, don't have all the mechanics in place, flag, banking, postal, all that stuff. If they don't have that all that in place, they can get you on paper terrorism. How ridiculous is that? I'm terrified of a paper. My God, it, it's terrorism. Come on, folks, it's ridiculous. That's why you got to know what you're talking about. It, And not only do you got to know it, you got to be able to speak it in a way that a five-year-old can understand, as Samuel Clemens once said. Does anybody know who Samuel Clemens is? I.e. Mark Twain. Jason, I'd encourage you to look up Mike Younger in his 1992 seminar speech in Acadia Center. 
Why would you encourage me to do that? How would that benefit me? Just, just curious. I have done some reading Canadian mainly PL stuff. I found some parts that were deliberately misleading or naive. Wayne, how would you know that they're deliberately misleading by Manly P. Hall? Again, Manly P. Hall is a Freemason. Keep that in mind. David Miller was a Freemason. Keep that in mind. Wayne, every single book or treatise available is written for all ages, for all people. Everyone can make their own interpretation depending upon their own conscious evolution. I can't disagree with that. Um, but I will say this. If you want to know about the keys, and you want to know about historical symbolism, and you want to know about esoteric stuff, uh, that Manly P. Hall book is the magnum opus. And if you want to go further into that type of stuff, uh, one I'll use one word. Fucanelli, you can look that up as well. Gurdjieff as well. Even Crowley. Crowley has some good stuff. Again, you got to approach it with critical thinking and logic. There's good, there's bad, there's bullshit, but there's also some gems in there. Bruce Lee and Jason Borg could kill with a pencil or a piece of paper. <sighs> it's just for enhancement of knowledge in the same repertoire pedigree of your own. One subject that I know very well is stating opposite to knowledge. Anyway, that's another story day. Hey, everybody, I appreciate it. Hans Beimler, wherever you are, if you're watching this, this is not meant as a satanic gesture. This is meant as a thank you. This is gratitude for everybody that has participated in this live stream. This has been the best live stream I've done in a long time. And I have a feeling it's because of the man, Colin David Eiffelwing, Colin Miller. And uh, everybody here has been very polite, very kind and gracious and attentive and i appreciate every single one of you and i hope you continue to watch this channel and stay vigilant folks do what you gotta do peace remember maintenance of rule one rule equal position of peace and neutrality balance of the honor and the grace i'm out thank you mm -hmm.